Normal EKG should have the following characteristics. An upright P wave in all leads except ABR. In lead V1 and V2, the P wave can be either upright or terminally inverted. The P wave should be consistent in shape and size within the same lead. A consistent in shape and size upright P wave in lead 2 means normal sinus rhythm. Missing this finding rule out normal sinus rhythm. The PR segment should be isoelectric compared to the baseline. The PR interval duration should be between 0.12 seconds to 0.22 seconds. Septal Q waves can be seen in leads V5 and V6 and in leads 1 and AVL when the QRS or cardiac axis is to the left of 60 plus degrees and in leads 2, 3 AVF in few leads when the QRS axis to the right of 60 plus degrees. Septal Q waves are narrow less than 0.04 seconds duration and small less than 25% of the amplitude of the R wave. In that lead, normal R wave progression, the transition between a negative to a positive QRS complex in precordial leads should occur between V2 and V4. The QRS complex should be positive in lateral and inferior leads. The ST segment should be isoelectric. The ST segment itself is flat, but the takeoff of the T wave is smooth and not abrupt. The T wave should be upright in all leads except ABR and sometimes V1 and V2 where it can be either inverted or upright. The normal T wave is usually in the same direction as the QRS complex except in the right precordial leads, I mean here v V1 and V2. The T wave can be asymmetric, which means the downslope part of, is steeper than the upslope part. The T wave amplitude is highest usually in V2 and V3 and usually diminishes with age. Corrected QT interval should be no longer than 470 milliseconds in women or 450 milliseconds in men. A U wave may appear following the T wave and should follow the same direction of the T wave and no more than one third of the T wave amplitude. Cardiac axis, which is similar to the QRS axis, normally falls between minus 30 to 90 degrees, and heart rate should be between 60 to 100. I did not discuss what are the normal amplitudes of TRS waves. This will be discussed separately soon in this course. Let me give you some EKG examples to practice what we just learned. I will show you five EKGs. We will check each one of them to see if it fits normal EKG criteria or not. Let's go. Let's start with this EKG and try to see if it meets the characteristics of a normal EKG. I start by looking at lead 2, trying to find that upright P wave that consistent in shape and size and I can see it there. So this is a normal sinus rhythm. Then I take a quick look at the all other leads to see if they have that upright P wave and you can see it's here, it's here as we said, it's here, it's here. Uh, it's here. So except of course AVR, it's inverted as expected. It's upright in V1, V2. So the P wave is okay. Then I take a look at the PR segment and a PR segment to see if it's isoelectric or not. And again, you need to take a look at multiple leads. You can see it's uh, isoelectric and isoelectric here. Again, don't uh, be um, fooled by the downslope of the P wave to say, oh, it's depressed. I think the PR segment is isoelectric. The next thing is the PR interval. I looked at the computer calculation and the PR interval within normal limit, but you can tell just from your eyes how many small you know, boxes from the beginning of the P to the Q. Uh, also, the, the PR segment I forgot to mention is constant uh, and the PR interval. They're not shortened or prolonged within the same lead. And then I go to the QRS complex. I tried, you see here V5 and V6, there's a small Q wave. This is what we call septal Q wave. And as we explained, based on the axis, uh, the axis here upright in one, upright in AVF and two, that means it's most likely closer to the 90 degrees and probably right to the um, 60 degrees. So we expect to see also septal Q wave in inferior leads as we see it. Here, these are normal small key wave expected. 
in the QRS complex itself, you can see that the duration, uh, it's not wide, it's less than half a box, so it's not a wide QRS complex. And then after that, you can look at the, um, the QRS complex upright on all leads, except in right-sided leads. You see AVR, V1 and V2, and the R wave progression, the transition between negative to positive QRS, happened around V3, V, uh, V3 to V3 here. Uh, so it's normal R wave progression. And I look after that at the ST segment. ST segment, the way I looked at it, I looked in groups, inferior leads together, lateral, high lateral together and anterior V3 and V4 together, V5, V6 together, and V1 and V2 together. And as you can see, there is the ST segment is isoelectric. Again, we said isoelectric, either we compare it to the PR segment or to the TP segment, TP segment here. And you can see they are isoelectric. There is no depression or elevation. And the T wave itself, as we said, the T wave, usually goes with the QRS direction, except in V1, V2, it can be opposite. And um, it's it follow that rule, you know, the as expected, it's inverted in AVR, it's uh, upright in V1, V2, although it can be negative or inverted here. The T wave direction is within normal limits. The amplitude also within normal limits. It's very important to remember here that never look at the T wave amplitude in, isol uh, in isolation from the QRS amplitude. The T wave amplitude should be looked at relative to this. So you can see it's slightly peaked, but compared to the QRS, it's normal. You see it here. So always look at the T wave amplitude in relation to the QRS, never without. This could be peaked if the QRS was very um, small, but based on this, this is normal T wave. The QTC, I looked at the computer calculation as well and was within normal limit. So I think based on everything, this rough quick look, this EKG is considered normal and this is considered category A EKG. Nothing to be done, just save a copy. Okay, this is the second EKG and clearly I can tell from the first glance this is an abnormal EKG. I looked at Lee 2, I cannot recognize any P waves. Actually, I cannot recognize any P waves anywhere, so this is not a sinus rhythm. So this is immediately an abnormal EKG. But if you know, look, you can see the QRS are wide. It, there is a regular irregularity, if I can say. Couplet here, triplet here, couplet here, and then triplet here. So this is definitely an abnormal EKG. I'm not going to go into the details, what is this? But one thing I want to tell you, you remember the first EKG we said about the T wave? Look at the T wave here, right? Compared to the QRS complex, this is definitely highly suspicious of a peak T wave. It seems smaller than the previous T waves, but again, compare it to the QRS complex. Very important to remember this rule. The T wave amplitude should be looked at in relation to the QRS complex in that lead. So this is definitely a peak T wave. And the first thing come to my mind, hyperkalemia and acute MI, and we'll come to all of that. So this is an abnormal EKG. Let's take a look at this EKG. Clearly this EKG is abnormal to me. And the main reason for this EKG to be abnormal is the tachycardia, right? You can see that this is very fast rate. Now, I'm not gonna go into details whether what kind of rhythm is this. Is this sinus tachycardia, sinus arrhythmia with tachycardia, a fib flutter, whatever, but this is an abnormal EKG from the first glance. Let's take a look at this EKG again. Uh, from the first glance, I can tell this EKG is abnormal, but let's say the, this, this is lead two, and um, this is the T wave, and this is probably the very small thing is the QRS. And uh, so this is probably the P wave. So it's cons consistent, it's like M-shaped P wave. It's consistent in shape and size. The way, this is most likely normal sinus rhythm, right? And um, now without further ado, the reason this is abnormal EKG, multiple things. Look here, look at the T wave compared to the QRS in inferior leads mainly, 
uh, I can clearly say this is a hyperacute or peak T wave again because I'm comparing this to the QRS very important to remember this okay so in looking at the inferior lead as well I can see here some ST depression compared to the baseline the TP segments or the PR segment by the way if you cannot see any clear P wave in lead 2 try to see other leads because sometimes in other leads will be uh, very obvious it's a P wave um, that's if you doubt if it's a sinus rhythm or not so there's a ST depression in lead 3 uh, mainly in AVF again there is a peak T wave as we explained and the ST segment seems isoelectric and I immediately look at lat high lateral lead you see here there is a clear ST elevation you see it right here compared to the baseline whether TP or PR you can see it here as well and it's very obvious you see it v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 again so there is st elevation involving anterior lateral leads also there is reciprocal depression bit uh, sorry reciprocal changes between avl and lead 3 as we explained this is category d ekg Abnormal EKG needs immediate emergent intervention. This is a STEMI or an occlusion myocardial infarction. Again, there's some other abnormalities, but clear cut, I mean, these very obvious things. Again, remember the T wave amplitude is always relative to the QRS. And remember the baseline segment that we compared to. So this is abnormal EKG category D needs immediate intervention and this is the final EKG and again this is clearly abnormal for different reason you can see the heart rate is very slow and it's irregularly irregular right and you don't see clear P wave so to me this patient most likely has an underlying AFib and for some reason uh, probably medication induced or something now he's having this profound bradycardia also the QRS are wide as you can see plus there's T wave inversion in multiple leads there's profound ST depression V1 V2 V3 so clearly this is abnormal EKG there's profound bradycardia if I have to guess just looking at the EKG this is probably some medication toxicity whether ditch toxicity or something else this is an abnormal EKG category D needs immediate attention and intervention next video we will continue with the descriptive part and start discussing the possible abnormalities that may affect each part of the EKG and of course we'll start with the P wave and PR segment abnormalities I hope you found in this video what you were looking for if you did please give our video a like make sure to share it with your colleagues and don't leave before subscribing to our channel a lot of great content still to come. Thanks for watching.